Hello, my name is Colin Francois, and this is my TEDx speech about NASA's Moon to Mars mission. Now, ever since 1959, NASA has been innovating on a field that is less than a century old, space travel. NASA has already been to the moon, but intends to go back, this time with their sights set on Mars. Now, they plan to first establish a lunar outpost on the moon that they will use for many reasons, such as development and research. After NASA has a station up and running, they intend to use it as a resource that can help NASA visit other celestial bodies and develop practices that will better suit life on other planets. Now, I can remember back to my childhood where I would look up at the stars and just imagine how amazing it was the scope of our galaxy. And to think that the universe is just billions and trillions of times more bigger is insane to me. And the fact that we're now getting our f essentially beginning to explore that is amazing to me. Now, looking back to the early 1900s, a French director named George Milius had an early depiction of what he thought going to the moon would be like. In 1902, he made a short sign of Phil Carr called A Trip to the Moon, where French astronomers were launched from a silver bullet into the moon from a large catapult and actually fought reptile-like people on the moon and then came back and presented it to humans. Now, this might be a dra dramatized early interpretation of what it would be like, but the fact that we can now actually go there and establish a permanent base just shows how a hundred years ago it seemed impossible and it was more of a fantasy than an actual reality. Now the first step in completing this endeavor will be to organize delivery services to the lunar body and back from various United States companies. Transporting scientific equipment and technologies, especially called the Gateway, will be instrumental in supporting human missions to the service and to be used in an extended period of time. Gateway will also have the capability to give NASA access to much more of the moon's surface than ever before and allow for both human and robotic missions to the surface. Now, NASA's new powerful space launch system rocket, SLS, and their spacecraft, Orion, will be essential to construct the Gateway and transport astronauts to and from Earth and the moon. Now, the first flight of the SLS will be in 2020. It will be to test the new innovative spacecraft systems flying together for the first time without crew, and the second flight will be manned and is targeted for 2022, the mission that will take astronauts for a flight test around the moon. The first, the third flight of the SLS and Orion will begin the delivery process for new gateway parts for the missions flying nearly once per year thereafter. SLS will launch larger components for the gateway on flights along with Orion, and Orion will be used as a vessel to deliver those modules to the desired orbit for assembly. Now together, Orion, SLS, and Gateway represent the core of NASA's new sustainable infrastructure for human exploration of space. Now the Gateway will allow for multiple month-long expeditions to the moon and other bodies, enabling for exploration of new locations throughout the moon. The first part of the Gateway is scheduled to take off on a private rocket in 2022 and propel as well as bring communications for the spaceship. After orbit is achieved, it will be tested in space for around a year. NASA will then launch astronauts in Orion on a space launch system rocket carrying over two new modules for the Gateway that will add a living space and provide other various capabilities for the astronauts. Over time, the Gateway will become a way station for the development of refueling depots, servicing platforms, and a facility capable of even processing samples from the moon and other celestial bodies in support of science and commerce. Now, NASA will continue to work with other companies in the space travel industry to find ways to innovate and prepare to combat the challenges of living in space, how to properly dispose of trash and other challenges faced when living in space. Now, considering the moon's distance sorry, from the Earth about 1,000 times out of the International Space Station, these systems become increasingly more important in the even larger trip to Mars, which is 34 million miles. Now, besides the logistics of the mission, it is important to note the informational gains that are served during the entirety of the mission. Once we arrive on the surface of the moon, we can look for natural resources that we can use for further exploration and even bring back to Earth, and we can test samples and see if there's anything we haven't previously discovered. Now, once we get to Mars, that's where the real informational gains will start to benefit us, as we know there's evidence that there was water on Mars in the North and South Poles, and we'll be able to visit those places and try to look for that evidence, look for possible water still there, and that means we'll be very close to looking for life, as water is the key to life anywhere. Now, exploring the Moon and Mars is essentially a combined effort for NASA to get their foot in the door in the ever-expanding universe. The Moon will be a staging ground to test and improve on new technologies, instruments, and such, and perfect life support systems 
for the astronauts to ensure their survival and cross all future missions. Now, after they develop those practices and built the outposts on the moon, it will of course become a place we use for all future lunar, sorry, celestial missions. Now, long periods on the gateway will allow NASA to research long-term effects of living on, in space on humans to eventually endure the long trip to Mars.